Aliens in the Mind. Co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius. <laughs> Convinced that the apparently simple-minded Flora Keary must be the key to the mysterious genetic mutation affecting the inhabitants of Lewig, Lark and Cornelius persuade her to leave the island and come with them to London. But no sooner have they got her on board the boat to the mainland than Flora changes her mind. I don't want a boat trip. We can't get off now, Flora. It's too late. Get her into the cab. In here, Flora. Dear. No. Now come along. No, I come want you. can't Flora, make get me. Her get in there. Get in there. No. Oh, uh, uh, Purser, uh, how long before we sail? Any moment now, sir. But what was all that? Oh, it's nothing, Purser. Just a rather spoiled child who doesn't want to go back home to London. <laughs> I don't blame her. He wouldn't get me going into a big city for all the tea in China. Help! Help! No good shouting, Flora. You'll just stay there now until we sail. Your tickets, please. Help me. Oh, look here. Take me off. Take me off. Right, off you go then. Down there where you just came from. Take me off. Hey, none of that. Come here. Well, I warned you. John. John, let me in. Let me in. Oh, for goodness sakes, John, do something. She must be calling every mutant on the island. There'll be a riot if we don't get her under control. The only way to do that is to knock her out. Yeah, exactly. Any suggestions? Mm-hmm. Just to these two. Pop them in her wine glass and make her drink it. That should do the trick. I hope you know what you're doing. Trust me, John. Anyway, I can't stay here chatting with you. I've got an invasion to repel. Now, don't forget to lock the door after me. All right, all right. Take me off. Take me off. It's locked, Purser. Take me off. Oh, my God. Now, you just stop kicking that door down. John, for Pete's sake, switch her off, will you? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no. Come. No. Oh, you don't. Come on. Off. No. What are you doing? Oh. Oh. oh, I beg your pardon. I'm awfully oh, sorry, that's, sir. That's quite all right, Percy. What? What happened? Well, I thought you were going to fall, so I, I just grabbed you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You feeling all right now? <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you, sir. I wonder what came over me. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, sir, we'll be sailing almost immediately. I must attend to my duty. John! Open up, John! It's me, Curtis! Come in. What have you been doing? Oh, I've been swapping bedtime stories with the purser. Quite apart from the little army of mutants down on the dock, our friendly neighborhood purser decided to join in the fun and kick the door down. Great Scott, the purser! How did you stop him? Well, I interposed my body between him and the cabin door. Clever, eh? And he kicked me on the ankle, damn <laughs> him. <laughs> Mind you, he wasn't really himself at the time, but when he came to his senses, he apologized and went about his duties like a good little purser. Extraordinary. The purser's an unexpected complication, oh, isn't he? Oh, yes, he was a real shaker. I just wasn't prepared for a mutant here on the boat. But it's a normal enough job for an islander plying back and forth to the mainland. Yeah, but I wonder how many mutants have used the boat to get off the island altogether and whether they went of their own free will or under orders. <laughs> Part three, Unexpected Visitations. 
Sherry? No, prefer scotch. Say when. Boop. Help yourself to water, dear fellow. Oh, Here you, you are. Thanks. What about you? No, thanks. I'll have a small manzanilla. You know, John, I, I really envy you this apartment. Wish I could afford a place like it. I wish I could afford three wives. Oh, ho, ho, ho. but you don't envy me, my three wives. Oh, no. <laughs> Not all three of them. Whereas I do envy you your apartment. Well, these were my consulting rooms originally. Uh, yeah, I noticed all the equipment. Most of it's pretty out of date these days. Now, that's why I insisted on taking Flora to the hospital. We can do every test you can think of there. Is that where she is now? Yes, in the radioisotope laboratory. I want to put her under the gamma camera. What do you expect to find, John? Some sort of brain lesion? Well, if the brain has undergone any physical change, it's probably the best chance we have of finding it. Have you considered that there might be no physical abnormality involved? Uh, just an intensified refinement of some particular sense or sensitivity. After all, telepathy is nothing new. This is not telepathy as much as thought transference. The so-called controllers transferring their thoughts to other mutants. Look, John, whatever form this mutation takes, in Flora's case, it's somehow gone askew. Most of the time, she behaves like a mentally retarded child, when in fact she's really as much a mutant controller as, as Mrs. Kyle was. Ah, oh, yes, but with Flora, that power only manifests itself when she's frightened or disturbed in some way. Emotionally disturbed. That's what I'm getting at, John. The point is, why? Oh, I have no idea. No, but she has. Or at least she may have. Some traumatic emotional experience. Her parents, dying in that fire, for instance, could have the same effect at puberty as it does at the menopause. Mm, it's certainly possible. There must be ways of finding out. It, it could be the key to the whole case. Yes, it could. Hey, you know, I know just the man. Kalman Baramek, a Persian. Why do all your friends have to live on the other side of the world, Curtis? <laughs> You'll be glad to know that this one doesn't. He lives on the other side of Regent's Park. Careful, Flora. It's quite a big step down. I'll take care of this. What do I owe you? Uh, it'll be uh, 85p, please, sir. All right. Here you are. Keep the change. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, what do you think, John? Nice location, isn't it? Right opposite the zoo. Very therapeutic. Can we go and see the animals? Uh, later, Flora, when we've seen Mr... The Dr. Baramek. Oh, Men Baramek. He's on the second floor, I think. Witchley, Hazel. Ah, oh, here we are. Baramek. Oh, please, let's go and see the animals. Later, Flora. That's a promise, Flora. Who is it? A uh, Curtis Lark. Come up to the second floor, please. In we go, Flora. Come in, Curtis. It's good to see you again. Oh, it's been a long time, Kalman. Uh, may I introduce my good friend, John Cornelius? Dr. Baramek? How do you do? And this is Miss Flora Keary. Ah, so you are Flora. I'm very pleased to meet you. Hello. Make yourself comfortable, please. Oh, thank you. Now, can I get you something to drink? A cup of tea, perhaps? Oh, that would be most welcome. Joanne? Yes, Doctor? Uh, Joanne, I think we'd all like some tea. And perhaps you could tempt the palate of this young lady. This is Flora Keery. Hello, I'm Joanne Harrington. Perhaps you could come and choose something you like. Not really. I... Come on. We've got all sorts of goodies hidden away in here. Mr. Cornelius, may I ask you if you retain a professional interest in this case? I mean, as a brain surgeon. No, only a personal one, at least for the moment. Well, my own view is that there is some block, some psychological block that inhibits her development. Uh, not a physical one. Not as far as we can ascertain. Mm, it is all quite possible. What would you try, Kalman? Uh, hypnosis? Mm. I think so. 
from what you told me on the telephone, her subconscious will make much more sense than her conscious. When will you attempt it? Now. Joan has already started. Oh. We asked the patient to look at some kaleidoscopic pattern placed in front of a small light. When we revolve this pattern, it creates a rhythmic pulsation on the retina. Isn't this something to do with some research they did with helicopter pilots just a few years back? Hmm? Oh, that's right. The helicopter blades were stropping across the pilot's vision and inducing almost instant drowsiness. I think I'd better go in now. I'll call you when I've got the girl in hand. How long will that be? Oh, a few minutes only, no more. How is it going, Joanne? Quite well, Doctor. Well, now this one. Couldn't we look at this pattern a little longer? I've seen that one. Okay, then. Let's look at that one. Joanne? Just a moment, Flora. You keep looking at this picture. Coming, Doctor. We've got problems, I think. What problems? She won't give it long enough. As soon as she seems to be relaxing, she snaps out of it and asks for a new one. I see. Flora? Yes? What do you want? I want to play a little game with this pattern. Can you see a red spot? A tiny, tiny red spot, just above the middle of the pattern. Oh, yes. The one that keeps going on and off. That's the one. Now, watch it carefully and tell me every time you see it come on. Just say now. Every time you see it. No. No. That's good. Very good. No. No. Excellent, Flora. No. 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 More tea? Oh, no, thanks. I'm fine like this. He said a few minutes. It's over an hour now. What's happening? I'm afraid she's proving rather a difficult subject. Well, I suppose we should have expected it. Joanne... Do you think you could keep an eye on her? Of course, Doctor. Let her lie down on the couch in there. The girl's exhausted. I'll get a blanket. Well, tell us what happened, Carlman. Nothing. You were unable to hypnotize her? Let us say, rather, that she successfully resisted all my efforts. Curtis... When you briefed me about this case, you told me that uh, she had shown signs of extraordinary mental power. Yes, that's right. By extraordinary, did you mean extrasensory? Well, that's what we suspect. We have indications, but no proof. No positive proof. Nothing we could submit as scientific evidence. Unless you've discovered something, Kalman. Yes, I felt something. It was as though she had some sort of antennae. The energy, the mental energy she was generating, was quite extraordinary. What do you do now? We have to find ways of reducing her resistance. You mean drugs, of course, huh? Mm, a diazepam should suffice. It will bring her to that drowsy, twilight zone between waking and sleeping. It's very much like a hypnotic trance, anyway. When do you propose to use the diazepam? That depends on whether you want me to, Mr. Cornelius. Why? It's not dangerous, is it? No, no, of course not. But the girl doesn't want me to continue. Subconsciously, her resistance is almost fanatical. Well, it's in her own interest to continue, Carmine. No, Curtis. It's in our interests. It may be in hers, if we're lucky. But either way, we have to go on. Right, John? I suppose so. Then I suggest that you should both return in about oh, an hour or so. I think we should let Flora rest that long. Well, looks like we've got an hour to kill. So what will you do? I think we should go and see... Who? The monkeys at the zoo. Now, whatever for. Well, why not? I always find them very... Therapeutic. therapeutic. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> okay, let's go to the zoo. Fascinating creatures. I suppose so. What do you mean, you suppose so? All human nature is there in that cage. Oh, and yet when Darwin first propounded his theory of evolution, he was laughed right out of court. Only because no one wanted to believe him? And no one will want to believe us, John. Telepathy's a, a musical act. Not on this scale, it isn't. What scale, John? 
This is London, not the Isle of Lewig. All we have is Flora. Curtis, you said she might be the key to this whole case. I happen to agree with you. Yes, but supposing Kalman does succeed in straightening her out, what then? I mean, does she become just another Molly Kyle? If you ally a controller's powers with any sort of real ambition, the consequences are unimaginable. Oh, come on, Curtis. That's a bit far-fetched, isn't it? One of the reasons for bringing her to London was that there's no one here she can use those powers. Oh, isn't there? Now, I know I'm only a poor, ignorant foreigner, but I understood that there had been an almost continuous migration from the Western House for the last 150 years. That may be true. And isn't it also true that not so long ago this country had a prime minister who was the grandson of a Scottish crofter? Oh, yes, but he, he went to Eton first. Oh. Oh, don't be silly. That's not the point. No, but it does make a difference. Well, it might have made one hell of a difference if that crofter had come from Lewig. Well, that's a bit of star-spangled imagination if ever I heard one. There, you see. <laughs> Even you don't want to believe it. Well, damn it all, we can't go marching up to the police and announce that the Prime Minister may be a mutant and a menace to society. But who can we go marching up oh, to? Oh, do be serious, Curtis, please. I am serious. There have been at least three generations of mutants on Lewig. Some of them must have migrated south. And their descendants could by now have risen to positions of immense power and influence. Then, if you're right, Curtis, presumably the mutant powers or susceptibilities would have lain dormant and will continue to do so. Unless there are any controllers around. John, can you really believe it's safe to assume that there are no controllers around? Well, they still wouldn't believe us, Curtis. We have to build up an unshakable case, supported by irrefutable scientific evidence. Well, we could only do that by going back to Lewig, and even that could take years. Yes, I know. That's why Flora must be the key to this case. Should... Oh, look, I, I think it's time we were getting back there. Oh, Professor Locke, Mr. Cornelius, thank God you've come. My, what's happened? It's Dr. Baronek. Where is he? In here. Come on. Are you all right? Mm, more or less. A little sore between the ears, perhaps. Thought he'd killed him. You thought what? That man, that, that, that oh, maniac. Right, nurse, now come over here and sit down and relax a minute. And then tell us what happened from the start. Now take it slowly. And try not to leave anything out. Well, it was um, not more than ten minutes ago. I, I just looked at Flora. She was restless, very restless. I was telling Dr. Baramek when there was a ring at the door. Uh, not the street door, the door of this apartment. Am I expecting someone, Joanne? Well, you've no appointment. I wonder who let them in from the street. Perhaps it's the caretaker. I'll go and see. All right, all right, I'm coming. Can I help? Yeah. Hey, yeah. where do you think oh, you're going? Yeah. Come oh, back. Yeah. Doctor, look, you just can't go barging in. Oh, yeah. Look out, Doctor, he's a red and you Sit down, won't you? I'd rather you sat down and told me about it. Doctor. I think it's all right. Thank you, Joanne. You can't go in there. No. Stop. You can't you stop. stop. I tell you. You killed him. You killed him. Away from me. Oh. We can go now. Doctor. I'm ready. Dr. Baramek, are you all right? Doctor. Oh, my God! Bye-bye, Doctor. Flora! I'm going now. This nice man's taking me away from here. But, Flora, what about Professor Locke and Mr... Flora, you just can't walk out on them like that. But she did walk out, just like that? Yes. Without coercion? But they went out hand in hand, like a couple of young lovers. How old was this man? Mid-forties, I suppose... You know, greying at the temple. Quite distinguished looking, really. And a very distinguished walking cane. 
Ebony, by the feel of it. Oh, poor Carman. I, I am sorry about that. I'm sorry about the girl. Do you want me to get the police in? Oh, if you could bear not to, Carmen, I'd, I'd be very grateful. I thought that might be the case. John wanted to phone them earlier. We should report that she's missing. Just missing? Or strayed. But not stolen. <laughs> Definitely not stolen. Not yet. Where's the phone? You can use the one in the office. Here, I'll show you. Thank you. There are a hundred questions, Curtis. Yes, I know, old friend, and so few answers, so very few. When Joanne was recounted what happened just now, it dawned upon me that that man was behaving in much the same way as a person under direction. Yes, I know. The question is, my dear Carman, under whose direction? Oh, John, what did the police have to say? They've already found her. Oh, good. She was seen wandering about the streets in a daze. What about the men? They didn't mention him. They've taken Flora straight round to my flat. I didn't want to involve you, Dr. Badamek. Thank you. It was a kind thought, but perhaps you would allow me to involve myself. Well, as long as you're coming, you might as well bring that sedative with you. What was it? Dizepam. Oh, yeah. Well, you better bring some. <laughs> we might need it. I'll go, Curtis. Mr. Cornelius? Yes? I've brought back Miss... Flora, thank heavens you're safe. We were so worried about you. Hello. Curtis, it is Flora. You must be exhausted, child. Come along. Take her into the sitting room, Curtis. All right, come on, Flora. <laughs> what happened to you? Thank you so much, officer. Come in, won't you? Oh, thank you, sir. I can't tell you how relieved we are to have Flora back. Glad to have been of service, sir. She is, sir, uh, all right, isn't she, sir? How do you mean? Well, she was just wandering around in the middle of the road. All over the place she was. And the way she talked, well, at first we thought she was on a trip. A trip? You know, drugged, acid, oh. LSD. <laughs> oh, no, nothing, nothing like that, no, no. She was probably just disorientated. She's lived all her life in a remote Scottish island. I think she was just overwhelmed by the noise and bustle of London. It happens sometimes. Hmm. Usually with old people, though. <laughs> That's right, officer. Anyway, thank you once more. All part of the service, sir. Goodbye. But I still don't understand, John, why Carmen didn't want to give the injection himself. He thought it was better for me to do it. She doesn't trust him, you see. Oh, I see, yes. Well, she seems to be fully under now. Do you think it's safe to call him in? Yes, if you'll be so kind, Curtis, then we can make a start. All right. Uh, Carmen, you can come in now. I think she's nearly ready. John gave her the injection. I'm sure I was right to keep out of the way. Even now, the sound of my voice might upset her. So could I suggest that you also carry out the questioning yourself? Either of you or both, if you like. I'll just watch and keep an eye on things. Okay, then. You ready, John? Ready and willing. Well, let's not keep the lady waiting. Flora. Flora, can you hear me? Yes. Where were you born, Flora? I was born at Lewick... On the Isle of Lewig. And now Lewig is yours, isn't it? Yes, Lewig is mine. <laughs> Why, Flora? Why is Lewig yours? Because they have to do what I tell them. How do you tell them, Flora? I, don't, I tell don't them... Don't confuse her. She doesn't know. And the fellowship does what you tell them? I. Not what the minister tells them? No, never. He just tells Molly Kyle what to tell them. So that was the setup. I never did like that sanctimonious. Shh, 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 shh. But Molly Kyle is dead, Flora. Aye, Molly Kyle's dead. And there's no one else that can tell them what to do? Not now. There's only me. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> Flora, why did you let Molly Kyle die? Careful. Because... Because she killed my mother. I wanted to pay her back the way she paid back my mother. Paid her back? For what, Flora? Make her tell us about it. Tell us about it, Flora. Good. Take your time and tell us about it. Very good. She found out Kiri was not my father. 
So she... she punished my mother. Punished her for begetting me in sin. She burned her. Burned her in hell fire. She told her her legs were paralyzed. And my mother thought she couldn't walk. And she just lay there, screaming and screaming for help. And the flames came nearer and nearer. And I kept willing her to walk. But Molly Kyle was too strong. She was willing my mother to keep struggling and screaming. So that when Kiri came in to rescue her... She wouldn't let him move her. And then it was too late. That they were burned in hellfire. And Mother was still screaming for help. 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 Oh, help me, somebody. Oh, for God's sake, I'm burning. Is she all right? It's a paroxysm. Oh, nobody it's help all right. me. I'm burning. I'm burning. Hold her down. Save hold her down. For God's sake, me. hold her down. Oh, God, can't we stop her? Oh, Mickey Finn, Curtis, your headhunter's oh, brew. I wouldn't dare not on top of the other. Oh. It's all right, Flora. It's all right. Get some water, John. Right. There you are. What's that? What's going on? Sounds like somebody's breaking down your door. I'd better go and find out. Hey! Hey, Here, what do you think you're doing? I say, look out! I. Look here! Oh! It's him, the same man as this afternoon. Stop no, no, him! No, 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 keep still, come on. But it's him. I know, I know, but just look at him. It's as though he were hypnotized. He doesn't even know we're here. Oh. Oh. For God's sake, oh. Curtis, are you just going to let him pick up the girl and walk out with her? But there's no way of stabbing him. Where's he taking her? Didn't either of you recognize him? Recognize him? Why should we? It's Ian Sanderson. Well, who's he? He's an MP, the opposition spokesman on defense matters. Oh, my God. Isn't anybody going to follow him? Well, you can do, but I think you'll find he's only taking you across the road. What makes you say that? Because he lives there. But I just don't understand it. I think I do. What was a subject for scientific research has suddenly become a question of national security. That was part three of Aliens in the Mind co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius, with Sandra Clark as Flora Keary, Steve Pleitus, Calman Baramek, Joan Matheson, Joanne, and Andrew Sear as the police constable. Aliens in the Mind was written by René Basilico from an idea by Robert Holmes. Production by John Dias. <laughs>